Where do the monsters live? People often tell us that the only thing to fear is fear itself, quoting that great leader of men. And yet, we know, despite logic and science and all the other folder, all that tells us the only things that exist are that which can be measured. Monsters do exist. They exist within the very fiber of our being, as though we are simultaneously the gods of and victims to these monsters. We have the ability to craft, just out of the mindless contemplations of very sick people, these beings which have power over us. Power that we gave to them. A victim has to surrender fear. And so, when we go out and have these wonderful evenings where we celebrate the terror that exists within all of us, we give life to more of these monsters. You hear a thump in the night and your mind runs riot with all the possible things that it could be both human and supernatural, something from perhaps another world. And we, <laughs> we have the power to stop them, but they don't like that. Because at this point, they've taken on a life of their own, and they realize that this collective push to make society braver and more understanding of the world around them, it, it troubles them. They don't like to lose the power that they've been given, and monsters, by the nature that we have given to them, are a vengeful lot. So, when you go and walk bravely into a dark room, head held high with such confidence, saying, I know for a fact there are no monsters in this room, that's when they are most likely going to attack you. It's out of anger at your hubris. Don't forget, the ones that often make it around safely are the ones who show these creatures the proper deference. The proud ones, on the other hand, well, you may have been the gods that created the monsters, but these monsters learned very well from you and have taken on a whole new life of their own. And they don't want anybody taking that power away from them. Sleep tight.